All right, let's try this again. Um, this time I'm keeping OBS up just so I can monitor stuff. Realize that my microphone was not on, so everybody who just saw the other stream, you saw me talk to a uh, camera for a while without saying anything. So, anyways, um, I'm back, kind of, um, with all this COVID-19 pandemic going around, spending a lot more time at home. Um, hopefully everybody out there is doing all right. I'm still feeling healthy, so carrying on as normal, still being cautious, um, keeping up with everything out there. Um, but I've been really busy for the past two years, and no signs of really slowing down in terms of how busy I am, but um, a little bit of priority shift and spending more time at home means that I can fill a little bit of my free time with building here and there. I've been spending a few days sorting and tidying up my desk, so hopefully I can get those creative juices flowing. But I wanted to take this opportunity to try to live streaming, um, doing some video footage on YouTube and seeing how that goes. Um, today I'm going to show you some updates with the new Sonic Stereo that has been put together for coming up on three years now. Hard to believe, but um, yeah, so this model walk through a few of its features and do a quick little drive demo on my desk here. Um, also talk about the light speed transmission that I designed. Um, actually came up with it a year ago and finally built it for BrickCon in this past October. Um, but that proof of concept and kind of what needs to change, what needs to be improved in order for it to be an actual workable model um, and eventually to be able to be put into you know a full Koenigsegg Gesco. So, um, going through, starting off with the Xterra. So this has been a model, I guess I've put together since kind of mid to late 2017. Um, put it together for Bricks by the Bay 2017. Um, and it was kind of the first time going down to California for that LEGO convention. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then when I brought this to BrickCon, it won uh, the most complicated technical award there. And then at Bricks Cascade won the uh, Technical Achievement Award. So this model uh, weighs about seven pounds, I'd say. So a little bit, kind of around two and a half, three kilos. Um, so two battery boxes, nine motors, four IR receivers, 12 pairs of Lego LEDs, um, and a switch or two in there. Um, and I'll walk through kind of all the motorized and unmotorized features. Um, yeah, so it was a lot of fun to put together. I uh, used a lot of sketching on engineering paper to help me sort everything out. I'll show you that real quick. So these are most of the sketches that I put together. Hopefully it's coming up on the camera all right, not too blown out. But starting with side view, back view, front view, really helped me put everything out there, um, position the axles in the right spot relative to the body, and build a frame around it. Um, so, take notes. This is how you build a complicated model. <laughs> Although, I shouldn't speak to you. I'm not an expert. Alright, so, um, going through some of the features. So, full suspension, four links, uh, front and rear, um, four wheel drive. Uh, I guess I'll talk about that when I get to the motorized. Let's talk about unmotorized first. So, suspension. You got opening doors, front and rear. Got a little switch in here to turn on and off the lights. So we got headlights, little pods down here, double stacked light bar up top, some rock lights off to the side, tail lights around the back. Um, hood opens and closes. Um, underneath the hood is just a lot of gears for some of the other functions that I'll get into later. Um, couldn't fit a fake motor under there. Uh, moving around to the back of the vehicle. We have a, you can see the taillights a little bit better now. I have a tire carrier on the back. This tire carrier swings open by removing this contraption here. It swings open, it's a little heavy, so it weighs things down a bit, but lets you open the trunk, which just reveals a big stack of LED connectors for the roof. Put that back on. All right. And then, like I said, the whole body uh, removes, comes off. So there's two pins back there that you might have seen in red. Inside each of the doors, 
little red connector is there and then there's two more pins underneath the hood that allow the whole thing to come off all as one piece which i'll do a little bit later once i show the motorized functions so in terms of motors and i said nine motors in this model two of them drive the car one of them steers uh, two of them control the transfer case in the middle two of them control uh, locking differentials one for the front one for the rear one of them controls the winch on the front which i can rotate that a little bit drop the gas can all right so there's a winch up front here that is remote control um, and then there's one more for an automated compressor with a pressure switch which i have blocked off right now so it doesn't make too much noise all right so let's actually do some demos of these features starting off with the winch it's the easiest one to get to and i gotta go the other way because my remote batteries are dying a little bit all right so winch comes out fairly slowly so thereabouts it's on a worm gear so um, it's a little slow and also kind of ratchets itself that way and then going back in it's fairly strong and it's integrated into the frame up front fairly well so it does actually pull the whole car forward right, hook that on one of the tow points and we're good all right steering is next quick demo And right, cool. And then I'll point this in the other direction here so we can do a little drive. Going forward. Probably check. I think this is. Looks like it's in high gear or low gear right now. So let's swap it over into high gear. These tires have been slipped off, and they have, unfortunately. So that's one of the things that I've been realizing with this model being sitting for a while. These tires tend to slip off the rims here, uh, just because of how much weight is on them. So I do need to make a quick adjustment here. Looks like the other side is all right. All right, so now in the high gear, the model moves a little bit faster. I think that tire just slipped back off, but that's all right. Okay, so forwards and backwards, no problem in high gear. This one was nice, um, kind of in a show scenario. You can walk around with the model, it's a good pace. And the lower gear is nicer for crawling. Um, and then we also have a two and four wheel drive switch, which I'll have to lift the model for. So right now we're in four wheel drive. The front and rear tire spinning. The rear diff is open, which is why only the passenger side wheel is spinning. And then going into, I think that is, there we go. That should be. Let me check. No, it's four wheels, so we're going to two. Right, there's two wheel drive. I'm gonna hold that wheel. Let's see the other one spin. Once this tire is back on. There we go. little finicky being up in the air having an open differential in the rear but speaking of differentials I think did I just pop yeah I did there we go all right so with the differentials I guess I should turn on the compressor here just removing a little blocking pin there allows the pump to start running um, so there's a small pneumatic cylinder in the front and the rear axle that activates a um, little transmission catch, one of these pieces here, and locks the differential. Uh, so we can think right now, kind of hard to tell. I think this should be open. Yeah, so there we go. That's locking the front diff or the rear diff, sorry. And it should be locking the front as well. 
to make sure. Yep. All right. So that's with both those differentials locked. And that's going to run and continue running until this pressure switch in here expands out and overpowers the rubber band holding it back. Cool. All right, and then hope probably in a little bit it'll kick on again. But now I think if I demonstrate the two wheel drive, there we go. You can see that's the rear wheel spinning in there. All right, and I think that covers everything. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see those differentials being locked and unlocked. So once they take the bodywork off, it'll be a little bit clearer. Now I'll block this compressor again. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and take the bodywork off. So it starts off in the rear, moving the tire carrier out of the way. Have to unhook this one connector back here to turn off all the lights up top and then pull out two pins, one and two. Tire carrier stays with the chassis, if I remember right, it does. Cool, then we pull out on the bottom kind of rock sliders on either side and pull the two pins out of the front. A little tough to get at, but there it goes. That should do it. All right, and then the last part, just to carefully lift this off, make sure to pull the dashboard off as well. That stays with the rest of the bodywork. All right, and you can see the whole bodywork is now off of the car. And it is fairly sturdy. Um, when, while I was building the model, I put together this little contraption here. And this is the kind of the width of the roof. So it's 15 studs wide underneath the top. And then it's, it's about 20 down low. So kind of ran a nine stud long beam down there, figured out where a 15 stud long beam would intersect both the top and these diagonal bits, and that made a really, really sturdy surface. So even if this model were to roll over, it wouldn't kind of come crushing in on all the internals. So it's a little dusty under here. Haven't, you know, like I said, this model's been put together for coming up on three years now, but now you can see a little bit more on how everything is laid out in here. So these are the two drive motors. Those come up here and then drop down into the transfer case in the middle. Um, back here, you can see the auto or the, the valves that control the locking and unlocking of the differentials. Move that, turn on the compressor again. And you can see it's a little tough to see, but that little gear is moving there, moving the lever down under to open and close the valve. Same thing in the back. All right, and that'll continue running then until there's enough pressure overcome this uh, rubber band in there and it'll pop it open just like that so I'll block that in again all right what else did I want to showcase here so the winch mechanism is fairly easily visible here which is kind of cool so this motor drives the winch comes up over a little bit to a worm gear and eight tooth and then this is actually where the winch spool is it's up here and then the winch uh, cable actually runs down over a set of pulleys down out here um, and this was kind of a packaging requirement in this case. I could have ran a couple of universal joints down there and actually had the winch spool sitting underneath or behind the skid plate up front. Um, but it would have been a lot more complicated and it would limit the suspension travel in the front a little bit more. Um, yeah, we can take a look at the bottom of the car as well. Now it's just the chassis. You can see both the battery boxes are nice and low to keep the weight low as you're crawling over stuff helps it um, be less tippy. Um, the differentials are in here and you can see the locking cylinders. Looks like that one swapped over to being closed. If I remember right. I don't know, it's just stuck a little bit. All right, so um, each of these cylinders has a little lever arm 
and that's attached to a catch that uh, moves the uh, transmission ring back and forth, either locking or unlocking the differential key to one of the uh, wheel outputs, you know, kind of locking the differential in a fairly simple way. Um, this right here in the middle is the transfer case. Uh, it was kind of tough because I had to rebuild this a few times and once when the chassis was almost in this state. Um, so I built a separate model here just to showcase how it works. So we have our gear input here. This would be the rear, uh, the motor input here, rear output and front output. So right now it's in two wheel drive mode. Front can spin independently of the input and the input rotating here. Right now it's in high gear. So this is spinning fairly quickly. Drop it into low gear. Spins a lot slower and using those driving rings and then engage four wheel drive as well. So this is the heart of the model. Um, it took me a good bit of fiddling to get something this simple and compact and also sturdy. Um, it's one of the nice things that I like about these driving rings is they didn't fail, didn't grind um, through the time that I drove this model around at conventions and stuff like that. Um, the only change that I would have wished to make was to swap over the uh, the little white pieces that go underneath the transmission catches and the axles for the new smoother ones. Um, but I didn't have those available when I was building the model. Um, yeah, and then both the axles, each of these axles has about 300 pieces. So these are the things that I started building, rebuilt them also about three times. Um, and they're pretty beefy, no gear skipping in either of the axles. Um, that was Probably one of my proudest accomplishments of this model is actually building something where there's zero gear skippage, um, regardless of um, kind of what terrain it's going over. Only problem I ran into was the universal joint snapping at one convention um, and motor stalling out when there's a little too much load. That being said, I think that's pretty much everything to cover on this model. Uh, we can see that the chassis lights are independent of the roof lights um, just that extension cord being disconnected there you can see some of the zip ties that i use to manage the cables um, and fairly necessary here especially with the cables running this close to the gears for the worm or for the winch drive um yeah you guys are welcome to drop uh questions you have about this model in the comments i'm going to be disassembling this and i do have a lego digital designer file for the uh, chassis itself so I might be sharing that um, somewhere either on Brickshelf or otherwise uh, for you guys to take a look at and delve a little bit deeper into this model. So moving on, that's everything I had to cover with this. Get that out of the way. Turn the batteries off as well. So the thing that I've been really racking my brain with over the past, um, I wouldn't really say a year or so, but once Kendrick Sig announced their Jesco at the Geneva Motor Show last year, um, pretty much the next two or three nights I barely got any sleep trying to figure out what's going on with their transmission, how it works, um, what's going on behind the scenes, um, and after a few days I figured it out started drafting up a proof of concept in Lego, and I think within a week or two, I actually got it built um, virtually. Um, took me another seven months to actually build it in bricks, um, but this is kind of a proof of concept, showcases how it works. Um, there's seven pneumatic cylinders back here. Each of them kind of represents the clutch, uh, or each of the seven clutches in the transmission itself, uh, or in the Koenigsegg transmission. They're controlled with four switches, um, so each of the outputs on the switches controls an independent cylinder, um, and then relieving the pressure from that cylinder puts that clutch or disengages that clutch. Um, and that was kind of the premise behind this. I wanted to only use four servo motors to control all seven gears, and I wanted to do it pneumatically. I didn't want to go through and actually use servo motors to directly actuate the, the driving rings in here. Um, and it ended up being fairly compact, you know, relatively speaking. There's two big motors hanging off the side, but everything is just about nine, ten studs wide on the inside, um, and about the height of the chassis at the rear of the car um, with the scale that I'm going for. In the back here, 
differential is roughly in the spot where it would be. Um, the cylinders or the, the actuators for the clutch in the Jesco are actually further back, but you can still see all those tubes coming back, just like in the um, kind of in the in the real car. So that was kind of cool um, packaging it that way. And this, this is a proof of concept. So there's a couple things that still need to be worked out, but I do want to do a quick functional demo. Um, right now we are in first gear, and I'll boot up this moderately accurate speed computer. Um, the wires are coming apart in there, so I think it's time for me to pick a new one up. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And maybe I'll rotate this so you can actually see the differential moving. So moving fairly slowly right now. Not too much gear slippage as I put some load on it. Which is also nice. You know, this model is also going to be heavy when I end up building it. Um, and then the tough part that I found out, let me turn this off real quick. The tough part that I found out um, with the way that I built this is that between each gear, I have to put it into kind of a neutral position. Um, and that's going to be a little bit tough to manage. Um, but with a little bit of control wizardry, I think I can uh, make that kind of a, a very quick um, interruption. Um, for some of these gears, some of these clutches stay activated between gear changes. Um, so for example, switching from first directly to third only requires one clutch change. Um, and I can actually demonstrate that really quickly, I think. So let's try this. I'll need a pop. So there, in that case, I only had to switch one of these switches. This clutch stayed engaged. Another one underneath disengaged and the other one engaged. Um, but if I were to switch from this switch to this one, um, so for example, going to sixth gear now, I would have to lock out that one, go into a neutral, and then add some pressure. So again, a little bit finicky, um, and it's kind of tough to switch between some of the gears. I noticed that I think seventh and ninth gear were a little bit tough. I think one of the rubber bands is a little bit loose um, or stretched out. So well, when I engaged the clutch, it actually pushed into the gear a little bit too much. So I'll have to take a look once I build my second version of this. Um, but I also wanted to showcase really quickly that reverse itself does work. Hopefully. Okay, that was just because I had two switches engaged there. So we're still up here, and let's go back to. <laughs> that one so I think this was the one that was tough here so let's actually disengage that one and we'll go back into third that seems to be a very reliable gear demonstrate actually this is first so from first into reverse, we keep that one locked out. We need to move that one and go down there. Oh, hold on. brief interruption some technical difficulties so that's one of the other things is you know, once I get this control system automated um, 
uh, when you saw there the gears clicking, that was me trying to engage two clutches at the same time. Um, because of that, I was trying to drive two different shafts at different speeds with the same input. And it's gonna pop out this little thing here. So we do have kind of an unintended safety feature here. Uh, but I'll put that back together and again. So reverse works. Um, it looks like I loosened something up in here. I have to look a little bit deeper. Um, but like I said, proof of concept, I can switch between any gear to any gear just by disengaging a clutch and activating another one, just like the real transmission. Um, but there is, as you can see, if quite a few kinks to work out before this can be put into a full model. Um, so I did want to make a quick video regardless, showcasing where I'm at, the progress I'm making, um, you know, kind of putting the Xterra to bed and disassembling it finally. Um, now that you guys have seen its features and not 100% perfect, it is a little bit of a, uh, a, a show model. There are some things that kind of you know, bug me about that model still, but the cool thing about that was um, you know, the drivetrain is really solid. I can take it off-road, do more crawling in a little bit, um, and I can drive it around the shell floor until it's at for two years and the tire starts slipping off the bead. So maybe it's time to build some bead locks, I'm not sure. Um, but this is kind of my next project, finishing up and debugging this transmission, making a better revision of it. Um, hopefully once that's done or once I've made significant progress, I can make uh, either another live stream uh, or live update or something like that. So let me know kind of how you like this format, what the quality's like. Um, if I ramble too much, you can comment on that. Or if you have questions about either of the two projects I'm working on, definitely let, let me know. That being said, thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you're all staying safe from the pandemic going around and you know, kind of using this opportunity to reconnect with family or whatever else. So with that, signing off. Hopefully I'll stay building myself and give you guys an update at some point here. So yeah.